Welcome to Dialogue Editing for Motion Pictures. By now you understand just what a dialogue editor does. So let's take a look at the beginning of the editing process, getting materials from the picture editor. They told you they'd get the picture to you, finished, locked, done, last Thursday. Now it's looking like you're not going to get it until next Tuesday. But of course your deadline hasn't changed, so your work time is squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. Now there's a really strong temptation to sort of get started with whatever you have just so you can get something done. But almost always that's a bad idea. Now every film has its own bizarreness and you have to act accordingly, but usually you don't want to get started until you have a certain number of your ducks in a row so that you can, you can work properly. This is also a good thing to remember here too is that Sometimes you really have to chase after the people in the picture department to get all the things you need. And in a second, I'll go through the list of what you need. And you, you become a pain in the ass and people get angry at you because you're bugging them, bugging them, bugging them. And you think, okay, 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 forget it. It's not that important. I'll be a nice guy and I won't demand this, this time. Bad idea. This is not a good time to be a nice guy. Before you start your editing, get the materials. Get all the materials you need, make sure they're okay, and then you can start working. Because if you say, oh, well, you know, who really needs the alternate takes? You're going to regret that for the rest of the film. And no one is going to remember that you are this nice guy. All that matters is they're going to look at your work and go, well, who is this schmuck? He doesn't know anything. So don't be nice. Get what you need. Smile, but don't be nice. Get what you need. So what exactly do you need? You need, the, you need for the picture to be finished. What does that mean? Picture finished, picture locked. The picture's never locked. These days, it's so easy to make changes that the picture department, the director, can make changes up to and including during the mix. But you have, there, there comes a point where they sort of officially announce, the picture is locked. At which point, usually, it means that anything after that, there is sort of a contractually allowed number of changes they can make before you start complaining and wanting more money. Anyway, get a locked picture. You'll get an OMF, probably, and uh, you'll also get a picture that goes with it, a, a video of some sort. It could be a QuickTime movie, it could be a Betacam, could be whatever, but you need all this stuff. Now, in the OMF, or however you're going to get it, let's say that the film was recorded on an eight channel hard disk recorder, like a Kantar. That means there's up to eight channels of stuff for every region. That's a lot of information. Well, the picture editor probably said, forget it, I'm not going to cut with eight tracks. So they made a either mono or a two track mix down, and that's how they cut. Now make sure that when you get the material from them, you're not just given this two track that they worked with, but you get all the tracks. Now you might have to be the person to build this, or it could be an assistant in the picture department, but somebody has to do this because you've got to have all these tracks available or you just, you know, what's, what's the point of recording them all if you don't work with them? On your video that you get, try to get a time code burn in somewhere in the image, usually at the bottom. A time code burn in is simply a visual display of what the time code address is. It, may, it will make your life much easier. It's worth being a little bit ugly to insist that you get it because you really, really need it. Now, if they give you, let's say, a beta cam, you can make your own. If you're going to digitize it to, uh, to QuickTime, just put it in the beta cam. Make sure you're in the, the output from the beta cam that allows for an insertion. Set the inserter on and then record that stream and you'll get your burn-in, but you need a burn-in. You need the original sound recordings. This seems sort of obvious, but anything obvious needs to be said several times. So you need the original recordings. Why? You need the original recordings because if there is a bad, sh if there's a problem with a shot, and you need to replace a word here. Let's say I'm talking blah, 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 and in the middle of my blah, 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 there's a noise. How do you fix it? You find the same blah, blah, blah from another take, drop it in with the same, has the same sort of intonation, same sort of speed. In other words, it sounds the same. And drop it in, it's fixed. 
Uh, sometimes, let's say you have a shot that's off mic, you might have to take another take from like a close-up and rebuild it so that it works. Trust me, you've got to have the original recordings. If you work without original recordings, you're not much of an editor. You just got to have them. However, with the original recordings, you also must get the pieces of paper that tell you what is on this tape or what is on this file. It's called a sound report. It's the report that the location recordist creates in the field simply saying, on this tape or on this file or on this day of recording, here's what happened. That's, that's how you can know how many takes you have, what the possibilities are, what kind of mic was used, is it a boom, is it a radio, is there some wild sound, is there some room tone. So you get original recordings and the sound reports that go with them. You need edit decision lists, EDLs. You need both video and audio. The audio EDLs will help you find alternate takes. The video EDLs will help you find scene changes, perspective cuts. It's just a whole lot easier to cut and paste between an EDL and your workstation than it is to constantly type in number, 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 number. Uh, back when I was a youngster, typing in blind was quite easy, but the fingers are just not where they used to be, so I'm a, become a real fan of cut and paste. A script is nice. You can work without a script, but it's nice. It's nice for a few reasons. First of all, you, you have a clue what's going on, but also when you first start the film, you don't know anything about anything about the film. You don't know who the characters are called. You don't know what the locations are. So if nothing else, when you start making notes saying, scene where this character goes to the beach, it's nice to know the character's name. And the only way to know that right off the bat is if you have a script. One more thing that's useful, it's not essential, but it's useful to have, is the picture continuities. Picture continuities are the, this, these giant books full of sheets of paper which contain notes taken during the shoot that tell the picture department everything about what's going on with the camera, the focal length of the lens, the f-stop, uh, and they describe the shots. Now, normally this isn't of any interest to you, but sometimes, uh, it's useful. It's three in the morning, you can't find that missing shot, your sound reports don't help, your EDLs don't help, maybe, maybe, maybe you'll find some justice in the picture continuities. Uh, I rarely look at them, but every once in a while they've saved my life, so they're good to have. Plus, they're really heavy, and so it's nice to know that some production assistant or associate producer had to drag them to your cutting room, so it's worth it really just for that. Getting all the right materials is essential if you want your dialogue editing to go smoothly. OMF and locked picture, EDLs, original sounds and sound reports are vital tools that you must have in order to do a good job. In the next video, we'll look at what you do when these files and folders and tapes show up in your cutting room. Thank you for watching Dialogue Editing for Motion Pictures, a guide to the invisible art. This series is produced by the Sela Yaniv Sound School. Dialogue Editing for Motion Pictures, a guide to the invisible art, is available from Amazon and other online booksellers.